Wednesday. I'm your host, Brent Schlenker. I'll be here for you for the next hour to talk about everything that we talk about on TLD Cast. It's the training, learning, and development cast for all of you folks that do the work of training, learning, and development. You don't have to have the title, but if you're out there uh, teaching people how to do stuff, educating your customer base, helping people perform their jobs better than you are doing the work of training and learning and development. And we're happy to have you here. Good to see so many folks here today. We're waiting for the always wonderful Katie Stroud to join us in uh, the video section of Crowdcast. But while we're waiting for her, I'll just run through my usual announcements. I hope everybody is super psyched for TLDC 18 coming up at the end of the month. Hit up the website, tldc18.com, and find out more about it. Things are shaping up, as I've always been saying, but uh, more so now lately. I can't even begin to tell you how psyched I am for this. I did a site visit the other day, and um, things are really, really shaping up, and it got me re-energized for... um, the upcoming event to be sure. And um, we had this weird stuff falling out of the sky last night. I believe you call it rain. Uh, For those of you uh, who get it more often, we got a nice downpouring. And the most wonderful thing about it, if none of you have experienced rain in the desert, it is the most wonderful thing. Uh, I, I think that is probably the thing that people fall in love with the most. Um, the smell of rain and um, the creosote bushes when they get a nice dousing of water the next morning is uh, a smell you will never ever forget and it is just um, it's it's one of my favorite things so uh, rainy days are always welcome around here and fun afterwards uh, especially if you're in any sort of a, a deserty area, for sure. Yes, and the lightning storms are unbelievable, to be sure. So uh, definitely looking forward to having everybody out for TLDC 18 at the end of the month. And, you know, I was going through our uh, registration list and just checking out the uh, the, the long list of companies that are going to be represented and I was just really amazed. I hadn't had a chance to take a look yet at uh, who, you know, the, the whole group that's going to be there. And um, I get so used to seeing all of the same faces here in the chat. You guys are wonderful. But I, 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 there are times where I just start to think, you know, that uh, the entire event is going to be like looking at the chat room, except I, everybody in the chat room all uh, live and in person. But there are going to be many, 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 many more people that we don't see here on a regular basis uh, at the event and from some fantastic companies. So I am so excited to learn more about what they're doing in training and learning and development and uh, having them share with everybody and having them grow the audience as well. So um, uh, it, is, uh, it, it is definitely going to be a good time. I can, I can guarantee that everybody is going to learn a lot from each other and, uh, and build up a great network and have some really, really deep, great conversations uh, with other peers in the community. So um, if, you, um, if you're still interested and you're not registered yet and you want to, you can definitely do that. You can get connected, uh, get some of your friends connected and, and jumping in as well. I think I saw Katie drop in, so I'll go ahead and give her an invite while I'm wrapping up the uh, announcements here a little bit. But again, if you want to come to the event uh, on a discount, you can absolutely uh, become a member. Hit up tldc.us slash membership and become a member of the community. The TLD cast and TLD chat, as I've always said, will always be free for you to jump into and hang out with us, a a little professional development for everyone for an hour to start off your day on the West Coast or end your day if you're in the UK. Um, And 
so if um if there is any uh oh no kitty's stuck in traffic uh that's all right don't worry about it we can totally fill time until you get uh to your computer unless it's like stuck in traffic for the next hour uh, then we'll have to wing it, but it's all right. We'll just wait for you to pop in. No problem, Katie. Everybody's here excited to chat with you. So, um, if, uh, if you can make it in great, uh, if not, we will do it again another time. So, um, uh, oh, she can join with her. I'm, I'm not sure if we haven't had people able to join via their iPhone, uh, yet in Crowdcast, but, um, It would definitely be sweet for her to try. That's for sure. Oh, you, oh, uh, well, it, since it's coming from the CEO of the app uh, of Crowdcast, then I guess she, she probably can. <laughs> Thanks for jumping in, Cy. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Maybe she needs to download the app or something like that. But, um, wow, you know, we have, uh, it's always good to get celebrities on board. You know, do you want to jump in the video this morning and uh, talk to us about live streaming or, uh, you know, how you train your community? <laughs> I'm certainly up for it. Uh, that's for sure. Um, I don't know if Katie's driving, though. It's probably not a good idea for her to be, even if she can join um, via the iPhone. If uh, Katie, if you're driving, I don't know if that's a good, uh, good safe option, but uh, it would be definitely fun to try. Can't join broadcast. Yeah, it says incompatible. So, oh, okay, cool, Sai. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate the tip. Well, we've tried to get people to jump in via mobile devices before, and it's always popped up as incompatible. So, um, I I'm not sure if we maybe need to, like, do we need to upgrade our, uh, our, our Crowdcast uh, membership or, or whatnot. Um, I don't know, but maybe we can test that afterwards. Um, or if anybody else in the chat, uh, let's see, yeah, iOS Safari is incompatible, but if they download the mobile app, it works. Okay, perfect. It's the mobile app. Outstanding. And yes, Android works. Fantastic. Wow, Sai, you're on top of it. You guys are awesome. We love your platform, by the way. Uh, it, it is, uh, it has worked out fantastically for us. Um, and, uh, and we're having a great time doing this. Two hundred episodes. We're pretty proud of that. And we have a great time doing this every single day. I don't know if you guys, if you guys have any other, um, casts that are going every single day, but, um, we certainly do enjoy your platform for doing our TLD casts. That's for sure. But anyways, I digress. I'm, uh, I, I'm falling off the rails. Let me jump back on real quick. Uh, let's see. We talked about membership. Hey, you know what? TLD chat. It moved over to Slack. Don't forget to get signed up in our Slack group and um, get connected there for the 24 seven conversation, right? We're here every morning. Excuse me. 8 a.m. Pacific time, 11 a.m. Eastern time, 4 p.m. UK time, live in the Crowdcast platform for TLD Cast. But you can ask questions, hang out with your personal network uh, via Slack and um, get connected and ask questions and get a lot of the same learning that you get here on the live video broadcast uh, on uh, TLD chat in Slack. So be sure to check that out. Join us over there as well. Also, don't forget to share. Share with all of your friends, your network, your colleagues, everybody that you talk to that you know um, is, is interested in this wonderful world of training and learning and development. Uh, click that share button right on top of the chat. Tell all your friends on Twitter, LinkedIn, G+, and Facebook. And I think that does it for the announcements, right? Craig, did I hit everything even though I was kind of all over the place? I think I did. We've got a good question in the question box already, but if that is for... 
Um, if that is for Katie, we're going to wait on that question and see if we can get her in. Send me an invite so I can see if the app works. Um, I have to send you an invite? Send me an invite. Uh, Oh, gotcha. Never mind. Yes, I have to send you the video invite. I thought you were, never mind. I was just reading that strangely. I thought maybe you were asking for an invite in order to get the app. Sorry, I need more coffee or something. Oh, there he is. Oh, sorry. Everyone be very, very quiet. Craig is hunting rabbits. Tell me when I can talk again. You can talk like one. I just need to step outside. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, the iPhone works. Thanks, I si. Appreciate that. All right. So everybody, this is the learning for the day. Everybody download the Crowdcast app for your iPhone or Android device so that you can at any time, anywhere, with your phone, as long as you've got some good connectivity, you can join us in the, in the video hot seat. Adam Weisblatt, good to see you, my friend. Haven't seen you in a long time. Thanks for jumping in today. So fun to see so many faces that we don't get to see on a regular basis. Adam's here. I think I saw some other... Um, some other folks that I have not seen in a long time. Great to see you all. Mohammed's new to the group as well. He was with us yesterday. It's great to see you back. Thanks for hanging out with us. Deborah, always good to see you. Hey, can you hear me now? Wow. I can hear so you now. On the iPhone. Interesting. This works in everything. Look at that. That's a nice parking oh, lot you have there. I can't see what I'm seeing at this point yet, so. Ah, uh, okay. No, it's actually coming in pretty clearly. Yeah, it's a, it's a good picture and everything. You guys must have good high-speed uh, bandwidth there. Are you I'm, on the Wi-Fi or I'm just actually LTE? I'm LTE right now but because uh, I'm too far away from the building to be on the Wi-Fi. But, wow, I, I've been kind of waiting for this for a while because I could actually jump in on an occasion, step away and jump in on an occasion. This is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So now this will be great to have people just kind of pop in and pop out wherever they're at. So thank you for testing with us. Appreciate yep, that. I'm going to sign off now. Okay, cool. Yeah, Good to see you, man. All right. So, uh, Katie, I don't know if you're driving uh, in the traffic that you're stuck in, but if somebody else is driving, maybe you could download the app and uh, and give it a shot. We know it works. Yay. So uh, we're psyched about that. Brian, ask Craig if he can see the chat. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry. I forgot to ask. Yeah, Adam, you know, we're all looking forward to hearing from Katie, but she's stuck in traffic right now. Sorry about that. Um, it happens. It, it definitely happens for sure. Um, and uh, we can absolutely still have a fantastic conversation today. We can just treat it like an open forum until Katie is able to jump on. Or in general, um, I was actually pretty uh, psyched about a new um, article that came out in Training Magazine today. If anybody's interested in talking about that, they did a uh, sort of a redo of the research on data collection, I guess, if you will, on um, the, the cost and how, how many hours it takes to build one hour of e-learning. Uh, did everybody else see that article? Um, cause I know we talked about it in the, uh, in the members only chat in the consulting group to, to kind of try to help everybody figure out, um, uh, you know, how much they should be paying for contracting for building an hour's worth of e-learning or, or the different types of e-learning. That's the other cool thing I thought about the, um, the article is that the, um, the data that they collected did break down the, um, the type of e-learning that um, that was needing to be created. So they didn't just say e-learning and make it like a blanket statement. And then that one chunk of time to create one hour of e-learning covered everything. They were very, they, they broke it down, I think, into three categories, which I think is, uh, is good. I, I mean, you could 
easily cut it into 300 categories, I'm sure, in the different types of e-learning. But to, to break it down to three, I thought was pretty interesting. Um, you know, the three of the most sort of common based on complexity. Uh, so does anybody have that link? Uh, I haven't been following the chat. Um, yeah, I'll definitely be posting it in Slack, Kim, for sure. But I thought maybe, oh, you are ready. Okay, outstanding. All right, here comes the invite. Sorry, my uh, my chat window wasn't auto-scrolling, so I, I missed that there was a lot of other stuff going on. Mel's here again today, yay! All sorts of fun folks hanging out with us today. We got Dana here, Melissa's here, Adam's here, Craig's here, Deborah, Jolt, Kim, everybody. So good to see everyone. While we're waiting for uh, for Katie to pop in, uh, I also put in a poll this morning just to keep everybody busy. If you're interested in answering the poll, looks like we've got a few answers in there. Uh, and then let me kind of define the question and why I asked it. Right. So I'm, I'm mostly interested in knowing, um, you know, what, which of the trends in the poll is really going to impact you? Like, like, what do you know that you're going to be working on, uh, you know, and that, that it's not just, oh, Hey, that looks interesting, but everybody else is doing it. My org is not right. Trends can often be that way that it's like, we're talking about them, but we're not actually doing them. They're not that that trend isn't impacting you in a way that you have to learn it and and implement it this year or work with that technology or change the way you do your design work. That's what I'm really going after. So what which of the trends that I've listed there? And I know there's a ton more. I didn't put in an other or anything like that. Um, but of the ones that are listed there, which ones do you think, or which one do you think is going to be impacting you the most that you're going to be doing? So uh, we'll get back to that at the end. But Katie's here. Yay. Hi, Hello. Katie. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you just fine. You sound great. You look good. Great video. Looks like you got some good bandwidth too. Finally. So oh my gosh. So Trisha Ransom on on Twitter said, Hey, Oh, you have to drive the RV and rush hour traffic. And I said, well, there is no rush hour traffic in the woods and there's not only one mile from my destination. There's construction and I got stuck there and then I got here and, uh, so anyway, here I am. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> it happens. Yeah. No. Good question. Right. Yeah. I, you know, we've got one question dropped into the ask a question. Let me do the usual. We have not had you on video here hanging out with us in a long time. So let's start from scratch and tell people who Katie Stroud Pro is. I am Katie Stroud Pro. <laughs> so I um, <laughs> I work for Incremental Success, which is my own company. Uh, I, I do stuff for people like help them figure out what they need to do with their training um, the big project I have going on right now is a book that I'm writing about using the structure of story to find the story in your organization and use that to create a better learning experience for everyone to build a, a culture of learning rather than just focusing on content. Awesome. And, uh, and like I've done for uh, so many other guests now, um, let's dial it back a little bit and uh, figure out, uh, tell us what your origin story is. How did you get into this crazy business? Oh, I lost you there for a second. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Thanks, Craig. Uh oh, but it looks like we lost Katie's video. <laughs> we totally need Anthony to build that shot collar for me, don't we, Craig? <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, dang it. I don't know what happened to her. We've lost audio and everything, Katie. I'm so sorry. I don't see you and I don't hear you. Maybe a, a browser refresh would help. Um, yeah, shoot. I saw the word dropped in earlier, perseverance, and I love that word. Uh, so actually, this is just the fun thing about doing TLD cast is that it's okay. Right? We don't stand on ceremony around here. It's a conversation. It's informal. We have guests on and we do what we can, but sometimes the tech just doesn't want to party with us. So uh, so we fill the gaps and we uh, and we'd still engage and we still have a good time. Still a great group of folks to network with and have conversations about. So um, yeah, Craig, Arduino to the rescue. Yes. Um, I mentioned this yesterday, but I'll just toss this in, uh, while we're waiting for Katie, um, Katie's back. Oh, she is. Okay. Um, it says accepting and connecting. So I'm waiting for that. But anyways, just real quick. So uh, Arizona Science Museum is uh, just a hop, skip, and a jump away from Galvanize, where TLDC 18 is going to be. And if you're going to be coming in early by any chance, um, Saturday they have a $75 all-day workshop on um, building with Arduino. And you actually get to – they give you an Arduino starter kit. Uh, you build something, and then you get to keep the kit and everything that you build uh, with you. So if you're um, interested at all – in learning about Internet of Things type stuff, uh, coding, you know, building your own, like doing physical computing with the Arduino platform. Uh, that might be an interesting thing for you to, to look into. Uh, come in, uh, you know, the weekend before and uh, hit up the Arizona Science Museum, Science or Science Center, I guess is what they call it. Uh, it's a fantastic place. I tried to get us um, to actually get the event uh, there. They do some really good work. They do have a lot of interactive uh, activities and, and things that you can do there, but uh, that didn't work out. Uh, the galvanized facility turned out to be um, a lot better, but uh, it's definitely still the type of place we should go to. There she is. So the inverter in the RV was not on, powered down my my power cord, and my computer said, hey, that's just too much for me to handle, and sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Wow. You know, it's, it's just the RV inverter. I, You know, we just don't run into the, all that much, but uh, you and Dana probably uh, probably have that happen every now and then, uh, don't you? <laughs> not, not when Aaron's here. He's pretty good at taking care of everything, so today I'm on my own, and he told me everything I need to do, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah, it happens. It happens. It's okay. Well, this is where we left off. So tell us, give us sort of the background story of Katie Stroud. How did you decide or stumble into this wonderful world of training and learning and development? So uh, it took me a while to get my act together. I, I kind of messed around just doing work for a while. Um, I went to, finally did college when I was, my mid to late twenties, um, did all kinds of things like art and music and science. And I thought I would be an engineer because I kind of looked at a list of, okay, who makes the most money and electrical engineer was right up there. Um, and, and then I started to realize that that, that just wasn't my thing. Not that engineering is not my thing, but, um, it just, it just didn't, it wasn't that thing that was my passion. And, and I started to realize what, what is that thing? And it turned out to be writing. I started to realize that every time I took any kind of class with any kind of writing, I could turn in an assignment. I could write the assignment the day before. I mean, we're talking like five page um, assignments and get an A. I mean, it was, it was easy. And I thought it was just easy. I just thought that's what it was. But it turns out that it's not easy. And it just came easy to me. So, so I went with that. I really like uh, tech. So I did technical communication. And um, when I graduated, I, or before I graduated, I started an internship at this technical company, 
under an instructional designer and she was having me review her stuff. And I thought, this is, this is pretty cool. I could do this. I can, cause it's all about messaging. Uh, training is the same mm -hmm. thing. I mean, so I interviewed someone once for an instructional designer job and she was a technical writer and she kept asking what's an instructional designer. And I would explain and she's like, Oh, so it's just like writing this book. So it's not just like technical communication, <laughs> but it is about getting a message across. And that seemed to be what I was good at and what I enjoyed doing. So my instructional designer, she supported me from there. She said, is this really what you want to do? Because we, the company paid for me to send me off to workshops and and get all the background and training. And she mentored me and I got on the job development going on so so i learned a lot uh under her and and that's how i got here today that's awesome that's yeah, awesome got, uh, yeah it's we've an, got it's an uh, interesting it's an, it's an interesting um, storyline uh, story that we hear every now and then from folks but uh you know the the whole i the whole stumbling through some other areas first and trying to figure out that passion and then all of a sudden it becomes that wow you know simplifying information for people and knowledge and sharing knowledge and um, helping others figure things out and to learn always tends to be kind of what drives everybody into this field sooner or later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nobody sets out to say, uh, well, I guess, you know, some people do say I want to be a teacher, but they don't realize that teaching doesn't always happen just in school. I'm sure at some point I had said I wanted to be a teacher uh, I, I actually remember, so this is a, a funny story that I, I told my husband and he likes to laugh about it. So um, in high school, I was kind of trying to figure out what I wanted to be. And I, enjoy, I, I was inspired by certain teachers and thought, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a teacher because I, I was getting close to that point. You had to pick a, a college and figure out what you were going to school for, which I actually didn't do. But um, long story short, I asked a teacher, I said, so how much does a, a teacher make? I wasn't asking her what she made because somebody told me, you don't ask that. You ask, how much would a, a teacher make? And she said, oh, you know, anywhere from 20000 to 40000 a year. And I got big eyes. I said, but you make no less than 20000 a year? And I just thought that was a lot of money. I mean, I, I grew up, my, my mom was... Um, she worked uh, a lot on production lines, uh, making some of the chips that go into your computers. Um, but she didn't make much money. I mean, she was, she might make 1500 a year. So $20,000, I thought, was quite a lot uh, at the time. But, um, again, it would just... It, I mean yeah, when you're when you're growing up too as a kid, you know that's heck anything over twenty bucks is, right? is good right? money. <laughs> I, I worked at uh, fast food places and I was making you know one hundred and fifty dollars a month, uh, and that was that was a lot of money to me because I didn't grow up having allowance and things like that. So, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I, well, I mean, everybody says, well, you go to school, right? You go get an undergrad degree, and then you get a, you get out, and all of a sudden, somehow, you're supposed to get some magical job. My first gig out of college was uh, six dollars and fifty cents an hour. Yeah, you so, know, when I started you know, working, I think uh, uh, minimum wage around here was it was five twenty five. Um. Uh, my yeah. mom had um, a job at one point where she was making eight dollars an hour, and her whole family she thought that was she was rich. She made lots of money. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I I'd always been working, uh, you know, since I was turned sixteen. But it was, uh, you know, I was just happy to have a job. A lot of my friends and peers, and when I graduated from undergrad couldn't find work because they were looking for the really killer jobs and everything. And I was just happy to find work in what I was, what I majored in. So I was, you know, you're single. It doesn't really matter. You know, you can kind of live on anything. I, I lived in a closet actually. Uh, 
we we built uh, it was in a, it was a it was a closet in Flagstaff, Arizona, in a like a, a small house, and they, we built a wall between my bed and the washer and dryer, so that I so that I wouldn't have to be sleeping there. But it was like, but I only you know they only asked me to pay like ninety bucks a month for rent, so I'm like, ah, how can I pass that up? It's like just right. camping, you know. Yeah. I, I can do this, you know. <laughs> Well, I, I don't know uh, how many of you know this, uh, but I'm a grandma. No, I didn't know that. Well, congratulations. You know, uh, my son has a, has a two-year-old. Um, but on your, your note about, you know, when you're single, you can live anywhere. Uh, coming out of high school, um, I had this little baby that I had to take care of. So uh, I... I I had to do something a little bit more than, you know, washroom. <laughs> yeah. That kind of changes it, things it a little bit. Huh? A little bit. Uh, and, and it <laughs> sent me straight to work, which is why I didn't go to college at, at that point. Um, so I went to work. I did a lot yeah. of different odd jobs. Um, I found ways to take care of the little guy uh, growing up. And, and once he started doing full-time school or, or even see, he was, he was preschool when I started doing community college part-time. And by the time he was going to school full-time, I found it easier to uh, get loans and grants. Um, being a, a single mom, yeah. uh, the government kind of takes care of you if you're, if you're trying to better yourself and go to school. So uh, for every dollar I borrowed for school, uh, the government matched. So, uh, so that was that got me through, um, got me through school, uh, got me through taking care of uh, my my little guy at the same time. And um, it's awesome. Yes, you do. You do very, what you can cool. to get where you are. Yeah, for sure. Well, hey, listen, let me take a quick break here. And then when we come back, we'll talk storytelling Absolutely. stuff. Okay. You can jump into the chat if you want to uh, and say hey to a few folks. But I just want to uh, reiterate, I'm trying to do this more often because we, since we don't actually have uh, the ability for Craig to shock me just yet to remind me, I'm trying my best to remember on my own to jump in and say, hey, everybody. Hit up TLDC18.com and get registered for the event of the century coming up in Phoenix, Arizona, January 29th and 30th. Come hang out with us, all of us, everybody that's going to be there and enjoy the beautiful weather. Get out of uh, the freezing cold, blistering ice storms and whatever else it is that you guys are dealing with uh, because it's beautiful down here in Phoenix. Take a couple days break get some learning and development uh, taken care of, network with some really fabulous folks like I was mentioning earlier. We've got a great list of folks uh, from many, many different companies, different types of companies, different industries, such an eclectic group that it's going to be lots of fun to see where all the overlap is in the work of training and learning and development at the event. So really, really excited about that. Lots of opportunities to do some hands-on stuff as well. Of course, the always fabulous Snap Synapse is going to be there and teaching everybody how to work with mobile devices and um, actually give you practical experience if you want it. You can help him uh, record some of the sessions for us. You can uh, learn from him and then, you know, record your own sessions. Uh, we've also got... Um, uh, Matt Pierce from TechSmith is going to be there and he's going to be doing uh, a session on uh, some quick uh, video production, giving everybody that opportunity to hit that record button and get comfortable with it. Because I really truly believe that that is a powerful medium for everybody to get more comfortable with in our industry. And if you want to start building some really, really quick learning media, video is such a great and powerful way to do that. And with our mobile devices and everything, I just I really think it's important that everybody um, takes that opportunity. Even if you feel like you're always going to be paying somebody to do it for you, um, doing it once or twice on your own uh, gives you a little bit more respect for the craft in and of itself. So 
Um, so we're going to be offering that up to you as well, amongst all the other great things that are going to be going on. But also hit up uh, the Slack channel. Talk with us 24-7. We're going to be cranking up a channel in there for all people that are going to be at the event so we can all start to connect and communicate uh, before we even meet face-to-face. -face. And uh, that way we can hit the ground running and really take advantage of the full two days while we're there and um, and make that happen. Hit the share button right above the chat. Tell all your friends that we've still got about 25 minutes left of great conversation with the wonderful Katie Stroud. So click on that, click Twitter, click LinkedIn, G+, whichever one is your favorite network, uh, social network of choice that you like to share with your peers and your colleagues and make sure that they get connected and become a member. Uh, help us out with uh, everything that we do here at TLDC by becoming a member. Get a discount on the event. But more than anything, what you're really saying is that you really appreciate the work that we're doing here. And you appreciate getting that extra value add in content in our members only uh, sessions and in the, uh, the other value that we're working towards getting everybody that is, uh, that is a paid member. TLD cast and TLD chat will always be free and a free place for everybody to hang out. Uh, the information should be free. The conversation should be free, but uh, we will offer uh, very, very, very special value uh, to anybody that, that joins us as a paid member as well. So um, that will continue to grow and become a great place for you to be in the network. So we really, really appreciate that. And um, I think with that, I will say, let's jump back in and let's talk some storytelling. What do you say? Sounds Katie? good to me. I'm trying to follow everybody else's uh, so, stories over here. Uh, that's some good stuff. People are yeah, talking a little bit about um, how they got started themselves, uh, which I, I love those stories. And I, I thought I'd ask a question. I know there's a question in there for me, but I wanted to ask everyone here. Mm -hmm. Um what was your worst job ever? What job did you hate doing and you wanted to get out? So what, I mean, did, did it inspire you to end up doing something better than you were doing? What did you do about it? That's a great question. And you guys right in the chat want to drop some, uh, want to drop some short stories in there? Maybe just a few words, few sentences, your worst job. Wow. I need to kind of think about this too. I've had a, ton of jobs on uh, the worst adam weisblatt was that uh you were an easter bunny in a mall was that your worst job ever and chris carl he made office chairs craig printer diagnostic and repair assistant and dana radio shack sales associate um oh but radio shack is awesome dana <laughs> Dana, did you get a discount for Is this that? Uh, so um, asking that question about whether or not Dana got a, a discount reminds me of, um, so I've been kind of looking around for that next thing. And I was talking to some people at uh, Amazon for a moment there. And my daughter said, are you going to go work at Amazon? If you do, do you get a discount on stuff? <laughs> right. You get free bananas. You do. Right, you Melissa? Get free bananas. You get a, you get they the have the banana cart. folks out on the street <laughs> handing bananas. out bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone can get free bananas, though. You don't have to work at Amazon. They just hand them out to people on the streets. Yeah. Wow, there are a lot of worse jobs dropping into the Slack. So many, I can't even keep track of it as it scrolls yeah, by. Yeah, uh, so man, you don't man. remember, but you think your boss knew about 9-11 before it happened? Yeah. Stapling fabric onto the bottom of seats. Wow, oh, Chris, that's amazing. So... Yeah, I was, I left college my, uh, I had too, way too much fun my first year of college. And um, so <laughs> had to uh, step back and reevaluate my life. And I was a janitor. And I think that sucked. Like nothing, nothing, uh, it resets your priorities better than scrubbing toilets. Um, 
you know, that'll, uh, that'll, that'll make you rethink your focus. And, uh, so I went back to school and, uh, and finished up, but w with a, a much, uh, much tighter, more disciplined focus than my first, <laughs> my first attempt. <laughs> So uh, was that while you were still in school or when you got out of school? I tried to, I tried to keep taking some classes while I did it, but I was, I, I came home with, you know, just uh, a bit uh, rejected and uh, felt like I had failed and felt miserable, but also knew that I just needed to kind of refigure out what I wanted to do with my life and just kind of straighten things out. And uh, I had been, scooping ice cream at a restaurant for a while anyways and the owner was really super nice guy and he was like listen come back i need somebody in the morning to like get the whole store ready he didn't call it janitor but basically i was the janitor i scrubbed the floors i you know cleaned the bathrooms like did all that stuff prepped the whole entire restaurant got it ready for uh um you know the the day's work and he you know paid me more than he was paying me to scoop ice cream so i was psyched about that and i just you know i think i took i took a cartooning class at uh, scottsdale community college um and i took uh, some math classes i think to try to get those out of the way but um uh you know i was just kind of lost it was a um, one of those discovery moments in life yeah adam i took the class but it doesn't mean i was any good at it, it <laughs> i love looking at like i like watching adam do his work and i like watching kevin thorne do his illustrator work and and everything that they do and i'm just like wow when i was a kid all my elementary school teachers thought i would be an artist because i just doodled and and i just drawed and sketched all the time and uh, my mom was very encouraging of the artistic side that I had. But then I just quit after a while. I don't even remember exactly when it happened. And I just never picked up a pencil or anything really ever again. I just, I don't know. I think I lost patience or something. I don't know. But uh, so then I went back and that's, that's when I was like, well, I should take a cartooning class and maybe try to do that again. And so it was fun, but didn't go anywhere. But you know how to draw a cartoon. I can draw a really <laughs> bad cartoon. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I, I took a drawing class uh, in, in college, and I drew some amazing stuff in that class. And yet, I try to take a pen and pencil now, and I don't really know where that, that came from, because now I, I can't draw for beans. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. Oh, thanks, Adam. You're so, awfully nice. So Mel is uh, out here in the Seattle. She's actually in Seattle. I'm in the Seattle area, but uh, and she's at oh. Amazon, and she's she says they actually do get a hundred dollars off a year and a bunch of other perks. Um, oh. So I was actually looking well, at a possible role in their machine learning department. Um. But in the end, they decided they it wasn't training that they needed. They needed developers uh, who, you know, I mean, I can code a little bit. I know some Python and some JavaScript, but mm, programming, machine learning, I, I don't have, you know, that kind of <laughs> background. It's it's not um, it's something I can do and would do on the side, but not not that. So. Um, Let's uh, let's try to get a little bit more refocused right back here. Well, there was a great question to the chat, by the way. Really appreciate that. I was shocked at how many people would jump in and share. So uh, uh, always good to know. But let's talk about that. Storytelling is more important than the art. I think that's an incredible statement. Um, but uh, I would I would guess that storytelling is an art form in and of itself. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe the art that goes along with the story, uh, can be less important than the story itself. But, um, uh, you know, what are your, what are your thoughts on that as, uh, as, a um, uh, story? Well, let's see. We only have 15 minutes left. So how can I get all of there's, there's so much to say about storytelling. You know, we, we learn from stories. Um, uh, going back a 
you know, to childhood days and my draw towards storytelling, um, there was one class, I think it was about the third or fourth grade. It was the third grade. And we had this assignment to write a story and we were given these six different story starters. And uh, they were all kind of cool. And I, and I didn't want to use just one. And I asked the teacher, I said, do I have to use just one? She said, I guess not. <laughs> and I ended up writing this really weird story that took all six of these story starters. It ended up being um, some kind of dream where all kinds of crazy things can happen. And I wrote a little book about it. And of course, you know, got a, a good grade on it. But I've always been that kind of person that didn't want to do things the way you were supposed to. I always wanted to do it a little different because the way things are supposed to be was always just a little bit boring to me. <laughs> and so that's kind of, I think, the crux of storytelling. You really, yeah. it really is just taking the obvious. It's all around us and looking at it from a different perspective, kind of looking at it from not the normal view that anyone else would do that. Um, some of you here uh, follow my bike riding adventures. Um, I have this bike and he actually has a name, we call him Rev. Uh, that's short for Revenant because he was in storage for a long time, 15 years. and. I had kept trying to get the thing out, but there was nowhere to put it. We have a, a small house in the woods and I didn't want to leave it outside getting rusty in the rain. Um, and finally I just said, you know, so what? It's going to be in the house. It's going to be somewhere. I don't care. I, I need to write. And I started writing again. And, and so I called it the Revenant. And um, I started taking pictures and I couldn't just take regular pictures of scenery. I mean, you see scenery pictures all the time. I had to, I had to get the bike in there. I had to get me in there because I know that when I'm looking at pictures that people share on the internet, I want to see people. I want to see people in the pictures because I don't yeah. get to see them. All. They're, they're yeah. scattered all over the country and even the world and I don't get to see them. So sharing a picture with someone actually in it, um, is what I want to see. And I kind of, you know, lead by example and say, Hey, how's it going? Here's where I rode today. And here's what uh, Rev and I are up to. And, and that's, that's part of that whole storytelling piece. I'm just looking at it from a different perspective. It's not, it's not a picture of the scenery. The story is, how did I get here? I rode this bike here and, and it was awesome. And, and I got a workout in and um, we're here at the water, but um, we're not just here looking at the water. We're here riding the bike by the water. I want to share that experience with people. And that's what storytelling is all about, is kind of taking your unique view on things and sharing that. And when you... How do we apply that in the in the corporate storytelling, in the corporate training and learning space? Because I, I know you've done that before to great success. How how does how do you you know take that idea and that thought and and bring it into the work that we do? So it's uh it's a I don't think you're gonna expect this answer, but you don't. You don't tell your story. If you wanna apply this in the corporate area. You want to ask people what their story is. That's how you do it. You invite other people to share their story um, and and sh spread that, share that. Uh, get other people talking to each other and not just going to work. Um, one of the reasons I asked that question about what was your worst job ever is because I wanted to kind of see what what people posted and they're all kind of these low level jobs, right? Like janitor, um, sales associate at Radio Shack, uh, stapling carpet to chairs, was it? <laughs> Upholstery, upholstering and chairs, right. yeah. Or so they're all kind of these low level jobs and yet there's still jobs that are needed. It's important stuff. And 
if people didn't clean the store and get it ready for opening, you're not going to make a lot of money because nobody's going to go to that store. I'm not going to go to that store. I'm not going to go use the restroom in that store. <laughs> and I'm not going to go and spend money in that store. So um, I asked that question because I wanted to hear other people's story. And, and then I take that story and I relate it to what it is we're doing today um, as instructional designers, as people in corporate training, we are uniquely positioned. And I don't think a lot of people realize this, but we're uniquely positioned yeah. to show people just how important their job is. Uh, I, I attended a session once where um, these people were, they, they had to train uh, people that did data entry for a hospital on how to use the system. Well, they didn't just show them how to use the software. It's never about the software. It's, it's more than that. It's bigger than that. And what they did was they, they engaged everyone in a project where they went and got used bikes and fixed up these used bikes and gave them to kids who were patients at the hospital. And the idea behind that was to show them that you're not just entering data in a system that data is linked to all these kids that come here to get treatment, to get, to save their lives. You're saving people's lives. You're not putting, pushing buttons on a keyboard. So, um, so that's how you apply storytelling in the corporate space. Yeah, kind of, yeah, kind of that. Under, uh, under helping under people to understand their, uh, their um, ecosystem they work system in. They work in. Storytelling, storytelling, I think, helps a lot. A lot. I know a lot of folks like hate the, like, idea, hate of, the you know, idea of you know corporate, corporate, corporate orientation, typically being, typically you know, being you know, having, to listen, having to listen to the business's story and all that kind of stuff. Doesn't mean we have to deliver it in the old school way that they did it, but at least having those stories available so that new employees can. Um, take advantage of them and to learn and to begin to understand maybe how the business and the company and the, and the different roles, how they came to be over time, I think means a lot and does add value and gives people that reason. Oh, now I, now I get it. Now I understand why, uh, like in manufacturing, for example, you know, it's just, you know, uh, being really good at your one job within the whole pipeline is great, but it's even better if you understand the job that happens just before yours and just after yours, how you fit into that bigger picture. And I think it's I it's in areas like that, the nuances where storytelling can really help people go, oh, I that helps me see the whole big picture. This is why my job is important. And if I do it this way, it makes it easier on the next guy down the line. And if I know what's happening in the process just before mine, I have a better idea of when things go wrong, how to help and, you know, to communicate and all that kind of stuff. So I, I think there's so many different little places where storytelling can be really, really valuable and we don't take advantage of it as much as we should. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people in the training field think it's a waste of time. I mean, who wants to come and listen to stories when we're trying to save time and, and get to the job? And I would argue with that and say that uh, if you're just going to get people to come in and check in and punch a time card, um, then you're, you're wasting time. You're wasting people's time because those people – they don't want to be there. And maybe, maybe it is that, that push that says, okay, I need to do something different. And maybe that's what it's good for. But if you want to run an organization where people are coming to realize that, then you're doing something wrong. So sharing those stories. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's great. And it's such great comments in the chat. You guys are fantastic. Uh, Adam nails it with uh, information without stories is just data. I think that's a it's a great simple way to put it. Like the the story is kind of like the the glue that kind of holds all that data together and and makes it uh, coherent, gives it meaning, right? Gives that data 
meaning. And this is what is so interesting. I mean, we could totally run down this rabbit hole, but we're running out of time, you know, analytics and data, right? Every now, now that everything is flipped, right? Before we're, when we're talking storytelling, it's like, we need to make up stories to tell people about procedures and all that kind of stuff. Now we're getting data and analytics and everybody's like, oh my gosh, the only way we're going to be able to get people to understand all this stuff is if we tell the story of what does, of you know, what the data is telling us. And so it's kind of, it's gone full circle now where it is incredibly important to, to, in order to pass on that data, it means nothing to people unless you wrap story around it. Yeah. And there's actually um, a shortage of those kinds of jobs. People are getting paid a lot of money to be that data storyteller because uh, there's not enough of them out there. And, and exactly. Um, there's a great example. Do they call it that? Is that is there really a job out there called data storyteller, or is that just sort of, or is it like data, data analyst and all that kind? Data of Data analyst is the word that they use, but it's essentially someone who takes the all the data and figures out what does it mean, what can we do with it, where can we go with this, what story can we tell. Uh, Eric Roland, he's leaving. Bye. Thanks for coming. I'll see you, Eric. Yeah, Bethany, yeah. right. Or yeah, Ace and Google's big data. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anna does do this whole data storytelling stuff. Uh, we should get the two of you together at uh, TLDC 18 and uh, and and talk more about that as well. So uh, you're going to be with us in Phoenix, I am. right? I'm going to be there. I'm coming Saturday to, I have a friend in the area, so I'll be having dinner with her. And then I'm, I'm going to be joining uh, Cheryl on the, the pre-conference workshop uh we're actually delivering that awesome. virtually starting next thursday and it's my understanding that anyone can sign up for the virtual piece and um yep yeah if anybody's interested in uh in getting connected on that pre-conference workshop and uh engaging um on that if you've already registered and you haven't gone back and even knew that that existed uh, go back and hit up the the website again and check it out. I would encourage you to do so um, because we can get you connected into that workshop for sure. Right. So yes, thank and, you for that. And reminder. so on on the website though, it says that the first virtual session is today, this afternoon, but mm -hmm. it's been pushed back. It's starting uh, next Wednesday. Uh, so you know. Awesome. Good to know. Um, I had yeah. someone knocking Hello? on my door. Uh, I think that's because there's some construction going on and they probably need me to move. Let me just answer that. I'll be okay. Yeah, no worries. You know what? We're at the top of the hour, so I'm just going to say goodbye here. Real quick. I'll, I'll wait till she gets back. See you, Irby. Yeah, we're actually flushing a line right there. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> Chris, yeah. <laughs> Who's at the door? Who's knocking? Is there conflict? Should it be resolved? Yes. That's the place to start. We were, storytelling. We were Look that. for the conflict and work around that. <laughs> I'm actually, uh, it was that's perfect. the chapter I'm at right now in, in my book. Chapter eight is all about conflict. So uh, lots of good stuff. Awesome. Well, I'm going to go ahead and close down your video so you can go ahead and move if you need to or uh, finish that story uh, right there. We'll see you next time around for sure. All right. We'll see you again soon. All right. Thanks everyone for coming. Yeah. Uh, it was a joy to have you guys all here and thanks for sharing your stories. Indeed. Thanks Katie. All right. Thanks everybody for hanging out today. What a fantastic conversation as always. We all learn something new uh, every single day here on TLD cast and uh, we couldn't do it without so many people volunteering to be guests and hanging out and having these great conversations with us. Wow, it's it's actually, it's so much fun to learn about everybody, uh, even just with a simple question, like what was your worst job? Uh, you know, there's so much we can all learn uh, from each other just in, uh, in, in engaging with a question like that. So it is, it is um, again, my favorite part of the day is this hour. I hope you guys all enjoyed it as well. Thanks for hanging out with us. You guys are fantastic. Um, be sure to hit up the Slack channel. We can continue this conversation on storytelling over there 24 seven. You can jump in and out whenever you want. Talk to all of your friends and colleagues and peers in the TLDC community. 
Um, and don't forget to hit up our archive of notes that Craig is so fantastic at creating for us. Thank you, sir. If you hit up tldc.us slash tldcast dash archives, that's the link right there. Hit that up and you can go back and uh, anytime we've referenced books or links to websites, things like that, uh, a lot of those links are available, um, past episodes. And don't forget to hit up the podcast, hit up iTunes and uh, subscribe to the podcast version of this. If you miss an episode, it'll just drop right down into your iPhone or device and you can uh, crank it up like Mike Simmons does to like 1.5 speed and you can listen to it really fast. Uh, and at least get all of the nuggets of value and information um, that is shared every single day. So we're here every day, 8 a.m. Pacific time, 11 a.m. Eastern time, 4 p.m. UK time, talking training, learning, and development. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out today. We will see you tomorrow. Adios. Bye, bye. No, 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 no. Thank you.